Hey, what's up YouTube? It's James and welcome back to another episode of Vintage Tech Junkie. In our last episode we talked about bulletin board systems back in the 80s and 90s. Today we're going to be talking about modern day bulletin board systems. Yes, there are modern day bulletin board systems still around. And believe it or not, a lot of bulletin board systems that exist today are actually the same bulletin board systems that existed way back when in the 80s and 90s. They've just been upgraded to work on the modern internet. So that's really the only big difference between bulletin board systems as they existed back in the 80s and 90s versus today is back then you used a telephone line and a modem to connect whereas today we're going to be connecting over IP uh, or the internet. Now there's a couple different ways you can connect up to a bulletin board system today. It just really depends on how you want to go about doing it. On a modern computer all you really have to do is download a piece of software and connect up through the internet. But if you've got an older computer that you really want to connect up to a bulletin board system for that authentic look and feel, there's a way you can do that too. So today we're going to be taking a look at both methods. We'll walk you through how to connect either through your standard modern day computer or if I'm going to show you how to build a Wi-Fi modem for under 10 bucks that you can connect up to your vintage PC and get it online in the modern age. So to get started connecting to a bulletin board system on your modern PC, all you really need is a Telnet client. The only real difference between old school BBSs back in the day and the more modern BBSs of today is the way we connect to them. Rather than using the telephone line and a modem, we're going to connect over the internet, so these systems all basically operate using Telnet or SSH. SyncTerm is a popular open source terminal that is used to connect to modern day bulletin board systems. It supports both Telnet and SSH, which makes it very useful for connecting to basically any bulletin board system in existence today. It's designed to emulate the look and feel of classic terminal programs from the era of text-based BBS systems, and it provides a nostalgic experience for users who want to relive or explore the early days of online communication. Some of the key features include its compatibility. It's basically compatible with any new or old BBS system, so whether you've got a BBS system that's been operating since the 80s and 90s, or a modern one running on a modern BBS package such as Mystic or Synchronet, this software will work just fine with it. Which also means that it has ANSI color support, and ANSI was very important to bulletin board systems because basically that was the only way of getting graphics. When you're exploring bulletin board systems, one of the key concepts that's going to frequently come up is ANSI graphics. Back before true graphics such as JPEGs and GIFs were commonplace, all you had to work with was ASCII graphics. And at that time, it wasn't even really graphics for the most part. You know, it was all text-based menus and such. But creative people soon figured out a way to put those ASCII characters together in a way so as to create crude but interesting artwork. This type of graphic design eventually evolved into using a new set of standards, which is called ANSI. ANSI enabled people to create ASCII text-based graphics in color and enabled more advanced functionality. Not long after BBS systems were invented, ANSI support became basically standard. So as you can see, sync term installed quick and easy, not a lot to setting it up, and it even pulled in a directory of 310 items from the Synchronet BBS list. Um, my favorite BBS is 20 for beers, you can see we're connecting to it now. Um, it'll let us log in and we can take a look around. Now there's, there's tons of BBSs out there for you to explore, as you can see there's 310 that's on the official BBS list, but there's probably more than that. Some of those links may be dead, they come and go. Uh, but some of them have been around for quite a while, so it's fun to just explore. Um, and this is a really good demonstration of ANSI graphics. Um, you can see it's kind of crude, but it's also kind of cool. So, you know, when I log in, it's telling me that I've got two messages. Um, and it's got various menus and things. Now, you can see this is a highly customized bulletin board system. And there's tons of stuff on here you could go through and do all day long. So I really encourage you to come kind of just log in and play around. It's all free. Um, everything is free. Here's an IRC uh, room that I just joined. Uh, took me a second to kind of figure out how to get out of here. Uh, but you could uh, log into an internet relay chat server. We've got a game room. And you can see there's several different categories of games that you can check out. Um, you know, local games are local to the board and they've also got some network games on here to check out, so that's pretty cool. 
So yeah, I mean, as you can see, there's tons of stuff to do here. I mean, you could just log in and play around with this one bulletin board system all day long and just find all kinds of cool stuff to check out. They got even got a file section uh, where you can download files. And you may wonder why you would even want to download files from a bulletin board system, but there's a good collection of software on here. And because this is run by hobbyists, you're likely to find a lot of software that you wouldn't normally come across on the internet. For example, this bulletin board hosts a collection of text files that dates back to the 80s. You're just going to come across stuff that you wouldn't have normally came across. And if you're running this on a DOS-based computer, which we'll cover in the next section, this is also a good opportunity to get new software and bring it onto your computer without having to use other methods to do so. So now you can see we're taking a look at uh, the messaging section of the board and what we're looking at now is local email. And I'm reading basically my welcome email that the system operator or sysop had sent to me when I registered for my account. And it basically just covers some of the features and more unique aspects of this bulletin board system. Um, I encourage you to sign up and uh, when you get the welcome email, read it. That way you know what's going on with this bulletin board system. So yeah, that basically just covers the basic functionality of the bulletin board. We'll go ahead and log off. As you can see, it's asking uh, if we want to leave a message for the next caller. That's kind of a fun little thing. You can leave uh, a message when you log off. So we'll just type Vintage Tech Junkie was here. Uh, maybe somebody will see it and uh, catch this video online. Pretty cool. Um, so yeah, we just type what we want. Uh, we've got three lines maximum. Uh, we'll just use one line. There it is. And it plays the uh, goodbye screens and disconnects us. So before we can connect up to any of these bulletin board systems on our old machines, we have to build a device that will allow us to emulate a modem over the internet. Thankfully for us, a gentleman by the name of Paul Rickards has already done this. He's created custom software for the ESP8266 module that successfully emulates the AT commands found in the old telephone modems so that it can trick your older computer into thinking that the internet is actually a modem. Now this opens up a whole world of possibilities for you to bring your older machine onto the internet. Now I originally started looking for this when I wanted to build a Wi-Fi adapter for my Commodore 64. I had seen some of those online and thought it was a really neat idea and just started looking into it. This method is actually an ingenious one because it doesn't really matter what type of old computer that you're using as long as it could use a modem then you can connect to the internet. So the only hardware we really need in order to connect up to the internet is going to be our 8266 module and a serial port adapter of some kind. Now the 8266 module will only accept TTL serial level input, so if you connect it directly to an RS-232 port, you're going to burn up the module. So we need some sort of adapter for our old uh, IBM PC compatible anyway. We're going to need an adapter that will convert those RS-232 levels to TTL levels. Now this isn't a problem when you're dealing with other computers like the Commodore 64 that basically has the TTL level serial inputs you won't need that adapter but in this case we do so thankfully RS-232 to TTL level interfaces aren't hard to find and they're very cheap so uh, in this case I bought uh, a set of five off of Amazon and the next thing we're going to need is the ESP8266 module again not hard to find and these are relatively cheap so once you have these two pieces of hardware the only thing left to do really is just to connect the two pieces of hardware together configure the software and then you're set to go. Connecting the hardware isn't all that hard either. Basically there's only a few connections that you need to make. You just have a ground connection and then you connect the ESP8266 TXD to the RS-232 interface RXD and then you connect the ESP8266 RXD to the RS-232 TXD so that way the connections are crisscrossed. TXD is talking to RXD and vice versa. The only other connections that really need to be made and they don't really have to be made are the CTS and RTS and DCD. 
if your interface or whatever you're connecting the ESP8266 module up to even have them. Some don't. And other than those, your ground and your VCC need to be connected as well. Then the only thing left to do is to download the latest drivers and firmware for the ESP8266 and then flash the module with the custom firmware. It's not hard at all, it's a pretty straightforward process. I'll put the links in the description so you can download and install this yourself. If you get stuck, there's plenty of guides on the internet that will help you along your way. So now that we've got everything wired up and, and programmed properly, now all we need to do is configure the ESP8266 with a few parameters so that it can connect to our local network. In my case, I connected it to my old DOS computer and loaded up Telex, which was a BBS client that I used back in the old days. The first thing to note here is you need to change your COM port parameters to be 300 baud N81. Otherwise, your ESP8266 isn't going to be able to communicate with your computer properly. And once you've got the settings correct and press enter a couple times, you should get a screen similar to what you're seeing here. If you don't get the screen, try power cycling your device or check your settings. Note that you can type AT question mark and hit enter and you will get a list of commands and configuration options for the 8266. So now the first thing we want to configure is the interface baud rate between the computer and the ESP8266 module. As you can see 300 baud is quite slow so we're going to try to max it out at 115,200 bits per second. And then once that's done we have to change our terminal software to match and as you can see it works and it's a lot faster. So the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and write this memory and we do that by typing AT in the ampersand W. Now we'll need to set the SSID and password for our Wi-Fi. Uh, we'll do that by typing AT string SSID uh, equals ColecoVision in my case. Uh, replace ColecoVision with whatever your SSID. And then the same thing with the password. AT string pass equals whatever your password is. And then you'll write it to memory AT ampersand W. And then type ATC1 and press enter to connect to your Wi-Fi. So now that we're connected, we could just open up the dialing directory uh, of the old software, but one of the problems I've noticed you run into when you open up the dialing directory, the strings can be a little long. Um, so for Telex, it doesn't always work, especially if the domain name that you're connecting to is very long. So what I tend to do is just type it into the command line in the terminal, ATDT, followed by whatever the web address is with a colon and the port number. So now you can see we're connecting up to the same bulletin board system we connected up on our modern PC. Works very much the same way and this is confirming that our serial to Wi-Fi adapter is working properly. Really this is exactly the way you would connect back in the good old days. The only difference is you're not going to hear the modem tones and the, and the phone dialing and all that. Although that would be a pretty cool feature if someone were to incorporate it. So now the cool thing about this all the features and everything that we had with our modern PC connecting up to the bulletin board system. Now with our old 90s PC, we've got exactly the same functionality. We can still browse messages, communicate with one another, and, and share files, download photos, or whatever. Um, and that's really cool just because, you know, now we've got a $10 device that we can actually use to breathe a little life into this old PC so we can do things beyond just playing games or whatever locally. And this was really the magic of the bulletin board system back in the day. Prior to bulletin board systems, computer use was really confined to whatever you could do by yourself. And this just opens up a whole new world of things you can do on your vintage computer. I'm really hoping this video inspires you to get back connected, whether through a modern PC or through your old system, back to a bulletin board system. There's just so much you can do and so much fun to be had. So there you have it. We were able to connect up to an old school BBS using our modern computer and our old computer. How cool is that? So if you're interested in learning more, I put links down in the description where you can find everything you need to build your own Wi-Fi modem for your PC or download software for your modern computer so you can connect up to some of these BBSs. Also, be sure to check out the Telnet BBS guide, link in the description also for that as well. Hundreds of BBS systems you can call it a day and check out. The one we looked at mostly today was 20 for Beers BBS. That's 24beers.com, uh, port 1337. Check out that BBS. That's one of my most favorite modern bulletin board systems. But anyway, I hope you had a good time. I know I sure did.
thanks so much for checking it out with me and if you enjoyed this video be sure and hit the like and subscribe button below thanks so much